So, hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9, where today we are building the supercomputer. The last of the parts finished printing sometime in the middle of the night, which was this beauty, which is actually the uh, case. Which, when you put it like that, looks a lot like a server rack, so we've definitely uh, achieved the look we want. Um... Yeah, so you didn't get a live build of all the other bits because, eh, complexities, some bits took uh, quite a few hours to put together like this. Got the burps and it'd be like a multi-part video and, you know. And we got it so all the bits slide down like that. So it looks a bit like a boiler at the moment, but this is where the valves are going to sit in here. I'm going to just glue them down to the base type deal. Oh god, there's fluff. They've been sitting on the sofa so they got they got fluff stuck to them. And the next section to go down is the processor unit, which is basically just two, uh, well, a number of flashing LEDs and a uh, transistor and oscillator circuit. <laughs> that is already looking the part. Awesome. So we move the power wires back there. All these parts have been independently tested. Move these out of the way. Here's the um, tape unit. This bundle of wires that I did want to go down to the bottom, but I don't think they're going to be long enough. So they're just going to end up hanging in the breeze. And then he goes up there. And I have spotted a problem. <coughs> Which is very typical of 3D printing because you tell it the exact measurements and you end up with it either being too small or too big. And in this case, we have slightly too big, right up here. By quite a significant margin, actually. But we're getting a look of how it's going to look, and that looks pretty. Pretty damn awesome, if you ask me. It looks proper nice and retro, and that's kind of what we want. So we need to trim the top down, and I'm going to do it by trimming the bottom down. So that means, how does the um, back panel look? I'm beginning to regret putting this into video already because, you know, it's not going to be a simple assembly. Oh yeah, we've got the same problem here that we can... I don't know, can we get away with using these? Because if we can, that's going to make the whole process a lot quicker and easier. Yes, we can. Excellent. It's a bit wonky, but cutting straight is kind of impossible unless you've got a guillotine. Uh, that's about right, although a little more off wouldn't hurt. But the wonkiness is not alright. So we'll pop him in there. Yeah, doing these snippy things straight is like kind of like the impossible task. <laughs> Cutting stuff with scissors straight is kind of like completely impossible. So yeah, we don't need to sit there spending five hours filing it down type nonsense. Right, where's the roof part gone? There it is. Uh, still need some trimmed off the top. So yeah, uh, you do the exact measurements and it either comes out too big or too small with 3D printing, so that's a fun little fact for you there. Be prepared to trim and modify. I'm not reprinting anything because this stuff took hours to 3D print. This piece took like three hours. I'm just trimming the top off of. But 
because the important thing is for it all to fit together as it should and that fits together as it should now so the back has been trimmed it'd be interesting to see exactly what length it actually measured to because um yeah <laughs> it actually went over which is unusual for my printer my printer usually prints things too small yeah that's the back panel that's the back panel falling apart Good, so he can go there, so he's trimmed. Now we've got to trim the very bottom of this to a similar sort of thing. Or should we trim the top? It's a bit more risky, but I'm inclined to trim the top first. Because I kind of want some of that depth. I'm hoping following the lines will help me if bits of plastic fly everywhere. It did right until the end when the uh, shape of the uh, cutters got in the way. <coughs> Let's see what difference that has made. Probably not much of one. This took a lot, this uh, case took like eight hours to complete, like over eight hours. It's like, yeah, there's, there's, there's a certain amount of the waiting game when you're doing this. I will warn you of that, so yeah, it's not always, yeah, we've got a gap in the front now. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, such is life. <laughs> I'm not going to trip, but yeah, we've almost got that, we've almost got him. You guys get the absolute worst view, but hey, there's only so many ways you can position a camera. I think we're all right until we get to about, you know, when it starts pushing against the geometry of the, uh, like, badass scissors themselves. But tin snips are well worth getting because they cut more than just tin. You could probably cut someone's fingers off with them. So they'd make a very good torture implement. Ah, oh, we're almost there, we're almost there. Let's just test fit the top. Make sure he fits. A uh, little bit more on, a um, little bit more. A little bit more to trim off, just a tad. Remember, don't go too crazy. Can't go much crazier than me though. Well, there certainly have been people who've tried out there. of 3D printing. Oh, I just knocked out the um, uh, yeah, processor unit. Whoops. Because it's literally just press fitting with the LEDs, which makes assembly a lot easier. And disassembly if I need to do maintenance. Which disassembly on this to do maintenance is going to be nigh on impossible because I'm epoxying the top on. And boom, that looks like that should do it. And guess what? It does. That fits perfectly. Let's turn it around so you can see it. Yeah. The trouble is you've got too much backlight from the window coming in there, which makes like something like this that's black kind of really difficult to see. Oh, thanks, Gravity. I really wanted them to fall on the floor. It's kind of what happens when you have the world's most tidy workbench, though. You end up with, like... Just shit avalanching everywhere, and it drives you bloody mad. But uh, I don't see how I'm supposed to keep this tidy because you know you end up with so many half done projects. Got one of these little 18650 um, battery packs. These are awesome. I got. I actually have quite a few because um, 
they do uh, they do freebie ones at work that I've uh, most of them at work I have like the odd one here but you know the ones from like conventions I've gotten out and about got here at home when you go to AWS and all them kinds of things and Splunk Live and there's like millions of them unfortunately the majority of them, like, those things just seem to be marketing wank I suppose I shouldn't be surprised since they're like yeah, corporate venture things, but they, they're, they're a nice little day out from the office doing something a little different to what you normally do. So yeah, we have uh, it designed in that uh, slidey slot things. Makes life easier. So, the next stage is, we've got them all to fit, is to wire them all up. So, we slot them back, we didn't need to pull them out, did we? No, we didn't. Oh, that wasn't meant to happen. Maybe I should have done like some middle support thing. Oh well. I should have done, I could have done, and I didn't. This is all designed to run on 5 volt because 5 volt is the best. And then what I'm going to do to hold it together is I'm going to... Oh, this clamp's nice and warm from where it's sitting over the soldering iron. Is I'm going to use the clamp just to hold it together so it doesn't slide apart and then all the bits fall out. And that, of course, makes it top heavy. Which is <laughs> less than ideal for what I'm trying to do. So let's try and weigh it down with a few items. There we go. So our two main bits we're interested in are... Oh no! It looks like we need to do the extension wires before we put all this in. So These ones are fine because they come out nice and far because they're pulled off an old NICAD battery I took apart to use the cells in solar lights. Was it no, no MIMH, not NICAD. NICADs are just going to be thrown in the bin because NICADs are evil and deserve destruction. So we need to extend these, that. So we need some more white wire. Uh, we don't have any more white wire, so we use blue for negative. Oh, the topsy turvy colours. The topsy turvy colours. Fun fact, I have about three different uh, wire strippers with me on my bench. This is the latest set, courtesy of Audi, because I saw that in Audi with all the um, accessories for wire crimping and that, and it's just like, yes, I need this in my life. The wire crimps have already found uses in various random things, because that is just what happens. That, my friends, is how it works. Because what we're going to eventually do is wire these down to USB at the bottom. The nice thing is, it comes with little cutters. So oh, you can do that. I should just brush some of this on the floor so the hoover picks it up when I uh, next hoover in here. Hoovering in the workshop is a real pain in the arse. Yeah, so my big cloud style supercomputer can finally be assembled. I was hoping to get it assembled yesterday, but, um, well, 3D printing times. <laughs> You don't have much control over those. You can do a certain amount of tuning to slow things down, but yeah, that's one thing I need to figure out optimization on is um, 3D printing times. Because they can be painfully slow. You can get prints that easily take like several days. Which isn't the most ideal amount of time. 
But you know, what you get out of it is uh, something unique and completely custom that you wouldn't have otherwise. I believe the milling process has a similar sort of problem with time. That just <laughs> is one of those things that just takes an obscene amount of time to complete. <coughs> A lathe is a tool I'd very much like because that's like much like a 3D printer and a milling machine where you can basically fabricate anything with them. And that makes such tools very valuable. Yeah. Oh, got the burps. That's fine. That's pretty normal for this time of the morning because it's way too early to be alive. If you're me and Auntie Morning. I do not understand people who like uh do the whole getting up early and all you know, all that crap and being you know, waking up and instantly being like fully booted and alive. People who know me know not to try and have a conversation with me when I wake up. You won't get much more than illegible grunts. My mum's actually learned to read my grunts over the years. Funnily enough, some other people have figured out um, uh, that there's actually patterns to them. <laughs> figured out it's its own language, which it kind of is. My heat shrink supply is getting rather low. I need to fix that. I got this nice bit of heat shrink that came with my 3D printer. So I put that in there. I think it was supposed to what I was supposed to organise the cables in, but I um, printed some uh, cable chains for that. And it just makes it look cooler, and it's uh, really effective at stopping it from eat, eating and mangling its own cables. So we got the. Um, power supply, my um, found in the skip and repaired one that Mike's electric stuff did a rip tear down of because it's generic Chinese and thus like has a million different name badges. Mine's named Rapid so it's basically rebadged by Rapid Electronics so, yeah. Standard Electronics these days, sometimes I wonder if anyone in the Western Hemisphere actually even designs their own stuff these days or if they just rebadge uh, Chinese crap I would not be surprised if everything these days is nothing more than a Chinese rebadge. And that the only real place uh, electrical engineering still exists is in China. After all, um, Dave Jones's uh, company that he used to work for ended up moving out to China completely. And they're just like, oh, you want to move over to, you, you can, you have the opportunity to move over there with well, us. Well, he picked the sensible option and was just like, yeah, I'm not moving from, like, you know, a place that's actually better to live in, like Australia. Where it's not run by a communist uh, dictatorship that has the worst of communism and the worst of capitalism. Because China does not have many or, if any, socialist properties, which is the complete opposite for most um, communist regimes. They're usually, like, super on the socialist... Um, agenda. Which on some respects isn't bad, you know, you lead to like, you know, say in um, Cuba where they've got like the world's best healthcare system. But on other aspects, you know, you know, like personal freedoms, uh, freedom of speech, that kind of stuff ends up being really bad. It's a shame that, you know, people seem to find, you know, countries seem to find it really difficult to mix the two. Um, right, so the next stage is to reassemble again, because we have the wires. We have the technology. We can make him stronger, bigger, better. We have the technology. In a film from the 1960s when they wouldn't have had the technology. Hell, we wouldn't have the technology to do that today. 
and that's like well yeah, it would be like 50 odd years later wouldn't it <laughs> away doing it with the, from the bottom I don't think it really matters and yes we can get away doing it from the bottom and then we can just angle that so it doesn't fall over I know you have such an excellent view inside right now don't you um, oh no oh no we can't get away doing it from the bottom because did you see what the tape drive did just there it was more than just a tape drive actually go on back in the slot you go there we go Oh, we have to go up high. Hang on, I have a plan. By Simon plan, I mean it probably won't work. Yeah, what do you know? It's working! Oh, look at that view you've got inside. It's beautiful. You, you, you can totally see what's going on. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look for mounting. Yeah, there's no, there's no mounting options, unfortunately. You just have to live with this terrible terrible view yeah I wanted these to go all the way to, you know I might glue them to the back of one of the valves so we'll just move them out of the way for the time being good that goes it good that goes in there that goes in there and we need the valves which are going to go in here that's um Go out the wires and move them into place. Okay, cool. Oh, that's like an annoying strand of hair. I get that a lot having uh, long hair, just that, that annoying little strand of hair that doesn't stop falling in your face and tickling your nose and annoying things like that. Like, I love having long hair, but there are some annoyances of it. Alright, let's grab my epoxy, who should be sitting over here somewhere, there he is. Because I had to open a new bottle yesterday because the epoxy was empty. Um, they could just go down there for now. By for now, probably for the next like five months. <laughs> Stuff tends to find homes in random places around here. Probably why I'm always losing stuff in here. It was like, you know, I found like one of my hairbands literally like avalanched under a pile of stuff. Right, we don't need connectors, although connectors are fun. Although, saying that, we might actually. Mm, no, we don't need connectors. <laughs> So we're snippy connectors off. Bye bye connectors. Can't reuse them, but uh, not that standard anyway. So what does it mean? To... Now there's no diode protection on this chip, so I must not connect it the wrong way round, or this kills a huge part of the project, which would make me quite sad because the real-to-real -real tape part of the project is actually my favourite part of it. It's the thing that looks the coolest. You know, I've I've really uh, taken the concept of a big Clive style supercomputer and gone um, my own direction with it, and that's good. You know, why why you why why copy someone when you can take inspiration from what they did and uh, add your own unique spin to it. know because Clive was just doing the big LED uh, flashy panels I also don't have the number of LEDs to even copy him I'd have to order them which is on the list of things to do because I might actually build a few of like copies of his panels I might even design PCBs for it that'd be, a, that'd be an actual first the trouble is so many of my projects are like what despite the fact we've got the stuff to do PCB design so many of my projects are basically just one-offs. It's just not worth doing PCB design. Oh. Good. I'm 
Let's go in the other direction. Good. Oh, that's looking cool. Yeah, I wanted to keep that tape mechanism going. I had some trouble with the um, mounts to that, actually stopping it from um, moving backwards and forwards, which would not have uh, suited me well. So, next thing I need, so that works good. So that just proves that the flashing LEDs and the tape electronics do not interfere with each other. That's good. Because one thing I've learned over the years is um, when you start introducing motors and stuff into circuits, you start getting noise. So with motors and um, loads of digital logic into circuits, you start getting a lot of noise on the line that can interfere with other parts of the circuits. My VFD clock taught me that one. That's a project I should one day finish. I should finish him. He's never been finished. Right, so these are the next things. Uh, let's um, sacrifice this USB cable, which is perfectly good and works, although it doesn't charge phones, annoyingly. We'll keep a little bit on the end here so we can potentially use this for something. Oh, what do you know? It's only power. That would explain, actually, a decent amount. So we will use those clips for that one. Yeah, here's one of them. Here we go. Now, the question is, have the Chinese actually wired up red to be positive and black to be negative? My ex used to argue with me. It's just like, oh, yes, they will have it. It's just like, hey, you don't understand if you think they will have. It's completely random. They can decide to come up with their own standards. And they do, and it's really annoying. Because it's like topsy-turvy land standards. Ah, do you remember Tots TV? That show was awesome. Probably one of those ones that's for only like English-only kids show, so no one else understands what the hell I'm talking about. Tots TV, what the hell is Tots TV? Google it. Google and find some episodes. Then you'll understand its awesomeness. There was also Super Ted or Super Bear or whatever his name was. That was pretty cool. Trouble is, some of these sort of ended in like the early 90s, so I only got like what was left of the HS. That kind of thing happened with Transformers, so like. Um, <laughs> we, we only ever got to see like the film where Optimus Prime dies which to us as kids seemed a bit odd them killing off the main character it's like he's going to come back somehow they always do I don't know if they ever brought Optimus Prime back I never really followed the whole Transformers lore oh great you just uh, you're supposed to strip it, not cut it off. There we go. Right, because our helping hands are busy actually supporting the supercomputer. I know, it's quite the supercomputer, isn't it? Ah, oh, we should test the polarity of this, shouldn't we? I thought that was a disk drive then. That's just the back of a um, dose meter thing. And grab our, our metrics me meter has given us problems, so we're back to the good old trusty fluke. Who, aside from like low battery, has given us no problems. Uh yeah, that looks good. Uh, we got like a. Hang on. Can we trigger it by shorting it? I don't know if this will work. Yes, we can. Thought that current spike would work. Yeah, they've wired it up correctly. Black is negative, red is positive. We are all good. That's probably.
probably why some phones won't charge off of this because they require um, require getting um, some form of uh, acknowledgement from the data lines, whether that's through resistors or whatever. Sometimes it's through logic. So we will. Um, wiring this in is going to be fun. Tell you that. So we've got to slide it all the way down. Have we? Yes, we have. Alright, this isn't going to have a very long cable. But yeah, we've got cable gland on it, so. Should produce that, and then I'm going to use a blob of hot glue. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna use hot glue because well, hot glue is kind of like really, really useful for this kind of stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, I will put them in with epoxy because I need something strong and more permanent. Right, go in the plug socket, you. There we go. While that warms up, we will continue with the rest of the wiring up job. We will. I am beginning to wonder. Saying that. Yeah, well, we should be alright. We should be alright, that's good. This is good. Right, let's do some big Clive style. Um, thanks, gravity. I wanted the hot glue thing to fall over. No, I don't want to melt the side of my supercomputer. way up. Oh, the um, springy bit of the um, hot glue stand uh, tried pinging that on the floor there. So that was handy. I was just thinking I wanted the tweezers to be back on the floor, you know. Where, the, where they're most useful is on the floor, you see. You don't, you don't want them on to be on the desk within hand's reach. No, you want them to be halfway across the floor where you have to get up and walk to get them. And then stuck under a cupboard where you have to find like a diggy stick to dig them out. Don't want them somewhat convenient. You no, know, that, that, that'd be ludicrous. This is like one of those super delicate soldering things where you can, <laughs> you can easily end up soldering like one lot of wires and they just ping away. Oh, the fun. Perceived fun. Sometimes you get lucky like that and they don't. I wish this would stop closing all the time. And then it gets stuck and won't open. I, I need to like 3D print something to jam in there or something. That should solve that. That's going to need the big ones, isn't it? A big heat shrink. Bear with me while I get it. I say the big heat shrink, but I have no big heat shrink left. I used it all up. I have like one section of big heat shrink left. We need you. Are there any other small bits we can use dotted around? You're too small, so we're just going to snip some off of you. I just imagine him screaming as I snip parts of his body off. Oh. I wonder how many people end up complaining about the fan noise in the distance because uh, it's my Switch that has all my PC and that hook to and printer and stuff. Um, I did try removing the fans from a Cisco one, but it melted. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend trying that. It melted, it did not like that at all. All it took was like a heat wave and it died. Massive heat wave where it got up to like 30 odd centigrade. <laughs> centigrade, it was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm tagging out. 
right in the middle when me and my brother wanted to play games online as well, just to add to the fun. Then after that, Blizzard's shitty net coding, coding struck because, as has been discovered, much to my annoyance, uh, Blizzard can't net code for shit. Fun little fact for you, though. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't have much manoeuvrability, I'm going to be frankly honest. Right, let's get the epoxy out. Um, we want to use the last of the epoxy in here. We might need to use the... Um, look, look, it always goes like dog piss yellow when it dries. Well, it's supposed to be clear, but its actual dry colour is dog piss yellow. And I know some of you would be like, but that's because of UV. Oh, oh don't worry. Um, don't worry, it's not because of UV. It's uh, when it lives in the cupboard, it does say, oh, look, we might not have to use the other pot today. The only thing is, there's no way to use epoxy without waste. It's quite, it's quite annoying, actually. Oh, God. Let's see what that is. Why are people ringing me at this early in the morning? I don't know why Dad's ringing me this early in the morning. Well, it's only just turn ten. I miss the call anyway, so if it's important here, WhatsApp me. If it's not important here, leave a voice message and that will be ignored. Because I don't actually look at my voice messages. So if you want, if you want a response, WhatsApp me. If you don't want a response, leave a voice mail and I'll blissfully ignore it. That's good, that's good, that's right. You do that. No, don't rotate round. Like that. Perfect. That's exactly how we want it. Good. Okay, good. So. Here's the new epoxy. From Poundland, of course, because Poundland's about the only place you can get epoxy. It isn't, like, stupidly expensive. Okay, good. Next stage, we need to glue this onto the... Oh, wait, if we do that, then we can't get it, assemble it. So no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to use the glue gun. We will use the glue gun to temporarily hold this in place, though. because this is the sort of stuff hot glue guns are good for. And then we unplug it, wrap it up and throw it in the drawer while it's still hot and it can blob all glues in the drawer because we don't care. And that will just hold that in place while the hot glue does its job. While the epoxy does its job and does a more permanent fixing solution. In fact, surprisingly, the hot glue isn't drying it. It's reacted with the epoxy. It's created a monster. The epoxy monster. 
It'll come and eat you alive. It'll eat your soul. It'll eat your children. If someone could sing, that'd be perfect for that right now. I'll get all these stringy bits out of the way, because stringy bits are not very super computery. Neither is USB power, but you could say it's a super futuristic, um, retro futuristic um, supercomputer from the far off future of like 2077. Where the transistor was never invented, apparently. Although that's contradicted in a fair few of the fallouts. When there's uh, mentions of things like process microprocessors and um, chips and stuff. As well as uh, in-game files like um, the scrap electronics in New Vegas actually using more specifically circuit boards from sound cards um, that have um, ICs on. And also a few unused models there for in the uh, Fallout 3 as well, so yeah. This one didn't end up being bloody long enough. Because it keeps sodding cutting it instead of stripping it. What the hell? There we go. Actually bloody stripped it for once. Because it makes it really difficult to be long enough then. And we are a little bit tied on the length department. This is where using the helping hands would be really useful because my fingers are really close to the bit that gets hot. And my asbestos fingertips are not as good as Clive's asbestos fingertips. But that's looking actually pretty cool inside. Let's show you what it looks like inside. And what it looks like from the front. Oh my god, that, that looks super cool. <laughs> oh, that that looks super cool. Ah, oh, I'm loving how that's coming out. Ah, oh, that looks amazing. Now I need the heat shrink. Would help if I'm actually pulling at the drawer or not between the drawers. <coughs> Right, are these going to be wide enough, or do we need to use... No, we can get away with using these. Good. Because the next stage is to hook to the magical... The magical... Um, what do you call it? What's that, Sonny? Let's actually run another test of the power system. So all the negatives are hooked up, all the positives are hooked up. All in parallel, of course. Oh yeah! And then you've got the uh, orange glow on the bottom of the valves, which is very subtle because I've used old school LEDs from like probably the 70s. And 
That was just a bit of rubbish we knocked on the floor, so we don't care too much about that. Negative will have to go over this one. So he can go back in there. We don't throw away any heat shrink because our supplies of heat shrink are low. So yeah, don't want to be wasting it if you get what I mean. Oh, that's going to be too close to the hot bit, which is annoying. So we'll snip off a bit. Pop him back in the heat shrink box. Because even a little bit like that can find you somewhere. Oh good, the plaster is uh, almost coming off. Can you, you know, you're missing a lot of the action here, but oh, there's not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. I wish I could do more, but I can't. Right, this is the... By some miracle, that didn't pop the thing off. Right. Now to do the really awkward one, which is a negative. We don't have use of our helping hands. Alright, let's put some new fresh solder on the soldering iron just to make life easier. Ah, oh, and exactly uh, what happened, what I didn't want to happen, happened. <coughs> it split apart. This is what I mean, we weren't born with enough arms or hands. Another pair would be really useful. Genuinely, I would like another pair of arms. It would be so useful. Two just isn't enough. I might be able to get away using one of these epoxy clamps. If I could stop that falling off. just to hold these together so they don't pop apart. And that worked. Good. It worked, my friends. It worked. Now we can sort of do that. Slide this on. And then we want to slide this one on as well. I actually prefer using a blow torch for the heat shrink because it's quicker. The electricity always takes a while to heat up. Electric oven. <laughs> All right, this bundle isn't going to go where I want, so I'm just going to fold it up up here and just tuck it in. So it just sits down and out of the way. Good, I think we can slide the back on now. And then we can plug in a USB thing into it. Oh no, oh god, I took the clamp off, didn't I? What a mistake. That was just stupid to think I could take the clamp off. Hang on, hang on. Fuck. Cool. 
<laughs> Look at that! Oh my god, that looks so cool! <laughs> that looks so cool! Oh, the camera's too crappy to see the uh, orange LEDs. Oh, that looks so cool! Oh, that looks amazing! I bet you guys haven't seen anything that looks so cool in your life. All these bloody random bits on the bottom. Uh, and the next bit is to glue the, this on with the epoxy, which I bet that back was dried. Yeah, that batch is solid. Not to worry. We have this batch. Not to worry, we have the epoxy. See, it's gone yellow. Went yellow last night in the middle of the chemical reaction. But yeah, everything's working as it should. I can just quite happily sit there and watch the um, reel to reels go round and round. I think that's mixed good enough. I've learned to use epoxy over the years. Oh, get the dog hair off. Dog is not even here that much. No, his hairs still get everywhere. Dog hairs are like asbestos fibers. They get everywhere. The only thing is they're not as lethal as asbestos fibers. I could never actually be with someone who's an animal hater. Animals are the best. These actually burn really well. Fun little fact for you there. Uh, tissue, tissue, tissue. I need tissue to wipe off that little excess blob that's there. Okay, good. So that's basically it built, and I'm not going to make you hang around to watch it, um, watch it dry. But I am going to get a bit of tissue and wipe off the excess epoxy. Yeah, we use the tissue from the many um, bits of uh, McDonald's we've ordered because uh, I love junk food. I'm going to be honest. I love junk food. Junk food, yum. Although it doesn't love my gut, I can tell you that. Junk food does not love my gut, it makes my gut very sad and annoyed. Okay, so, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to let that dry before I release the clamps. But there is my supercomputer! Build. Oh yeah, you can see the LEDs.
They look really cold. Interestingly, you can only see one of them flashing. And then, of course, the patterns all change because they're not synced. I can show that to my parents today. But yeah, we're right. We'll turn off the supercomputer. I've had an awesome idea for a joke video as well. I'm being trying to see if anyone there uh, sort of is sort of stealing another joke from the IT crowd, but that's kind of the point. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Oh, we're under an hour.